Hey, welcome to uh, today's video. So in this uh, video, let's do something uh, a little bit different and maybe uh, fun, right? So I'm going to um, grab a character from Sketchfab, completely a random character, and let's uh, rig the character and animate it. So the goal uh, of this video is to see what type of uh, technical hurdles or obstacles you might run into if you, for example, wanted to you know, purchase a character that's not uh, rigged or just download a free one uh, you know, for your uh, game or your project or your short film, whatever you're doing, uh, what could be some of the technical things we might run into, right? So to do this, what I'm going to do, and uh, you know, you're welcome to do this with me, I'm going to go to sketchfab.com. So here it is. And I'm literally just going to type in uh, game character. And let's just let's just download one. So I'm gonna download one, and uh, one thing that I want to do uh, to make sure that everyone who's watching this video can also um, download as well. Let's just say downloadable, right? So that's gonna be free. And um, so these are the game characters that are currently available, right? And you can see uh, on Sketchfab there's an icon on the top right um, of each screenshot, right? So if you see a dollar sign, that means you have to buy it. And then if you see um, these two icons, that means it's the model is animated. And, uh, you know, this one is obviously an icon that you can uh, freely download, right? So let's just uh, find something that uh, we like that um, makes sense, right? So I'm looking at this character right here, and this is pretty awesome uh, honestly I like this a lot and I can see that I can download it for free and it doesn't have any animations and uh, let's just grab that so I'm gonna click on this character all right and here it is and this one is made by Jessica Peterson so if Jessica is watching uh, you know this is pretty awesome really cool work and let's see so let's investigate this model uh, if I click on model inspector right um, let's take a look at the um, wireframe for this character so right in the bottom here you can see it says wireframe I'm gonna click on that and see so uh, this model has been exported out as a bunch of triangles and that's fine for a game model right um, I think this will work and we can also uh, take a look at the UVs right and what else can we look at? We can look at separate textures. So let's look just at the uh, texture for the character. This is what it looks like. And of course we can look at the normal map and see what that looks like. So to me, this looks uh, really great. Uh, let's go back to final render and let's just download this model. And uh, let's see if we need to know anything else. So one thing we do know is that this is a license uh, with the attribution, which means uh, let's see, so that means you are free to share this model, right? You can copy and redistribute the material. All right, so what does that mean? So uh, attribution means you must give an appropriate credit, right? So we're going to give Jessica credit and a uh, link to her model and no additional restrictions. So it's my understanding if you uh, rig this character, you are free to uh, use it even, uh, even commercially. That's my understanding. And uh, you could pretty much do anything you want with it as long as you give Jessica uh, credit, right? So um, let's go ahead and download this and see if we can um, rig this and animate it in Maya, right? So I'm going to say download. Now, one of the things, uh, and this is going to come up a lot, especially if you're a Maya uh, user, right? You'll see that a lot of times uh, when you are uh, downloading a model from, from a marketplace, or a free resource site, uh, you won't always get the FBX model that you might need, right? So in this case, we have uh, GLB files, right? Which is, um, you know, anyone who does 3D understands that this is pretty much uh, great for uh, Blender or uh, maybe some other 3D packages, but not Maya. Maya is not currently supporting uh, GLB very well, unless you get like an external plugin or something, but uh, that's fine. Let's just use Let's download GLTF. And the difference, just so you know, between GLB and GLTF is GLB is, um, you know, it's almost like a zip file. It will have the textures 
uh, embedded in it, right? So it's going to be kind of bundled together. And then G GLTF is going to give us texture separate, which is good because then we can use um, our own uh, animation package to kind of call them, right? Especially if you're making a game, uh, you want these to be in a separate, you know, folder, right? So let's download the GLTF. I'm just going to say download. And do this as well uh, with me and let's take a look and see what we just grabbed. All right, so if I go uh, into my downloads folder, I see that um, I was able to download something called alien underscore character. So if you follow me, you uh, would see the same, right? And you can see that uh, here's our license. So it's telling us that the author must be credited and commercial use is allowed. So uh, that's uh, important to know, right? All right, so uh, let's go ahead and look at the textures and see what Jessica made for us. So there's the uh, base color texture. There's the emission that looks like it's for the maybe the necklace. And we have roughness and the normal map, right? So we, we have uh, pretty much just three maps, really. Just the base color, roughness, and the normal map, which is simple enough, right? And uh, next, what we need to do is we need to... Uh, convert this GLTF into an FBX so we can import this into Maya. For that, let's go ahead and fire up Blender just for the sake of converting this GLTF to FBX. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to uh, open Blender. All right, so here I'm in Blender. I'm going to I'm going to go to file. Uh, let's do import. Let's select GLTF. Let's navi let's find our file. Uh, I'm going to select it and say import. All right, uh, this how it comes uh, in and uh, if we turn on this button right here in blender we can see uh, what the shading looks like and uh, on my end it doesn't look too great so if I select this let's go ahead and select these and let's go on the right if you go into uh, let's see into these material uh, this material little tab and scroll down you should see something in the bottom called um, settings Let's change these settings to maybe alpha clip. Uh, and that seems to be much, much better, right? So you could see that that was just a blending mode um, showing us um, that we needed to change that just for the preview sake, right? I'm not doing anything here in Blender. I'm not gonna render it or animate it or rig it. I really like to use Maya for this kind of stuff. So uh, to move to the next step, let's grab this model and export it um, to FBX. So I'm going to do that. File, export, FBX. And in here, I'm just going to call it uh, alien uh, character. That's fine. Alien character. I'm just going to work right out of my downloads folder. And uh, let's see, do I need to change anything here? I'm going to leave everything as is in Blender. Just simply say export. All right, cool. Now uh, let's go ahead and jump into Maya. All right, so here I'm in Maya 2024, but this doesn't really matter. Uh, it should work with older versions as well. Uh, let's go ahead and do file import. I'm gonna navigate to my uh, folder and uh, right here you can see the FBX file that we just exported uh, from Blender. And you can see the file size too, it's 917K. So this file size is telling us obviously that the textures are not embedded in the mesh obviously it wouldn't be so small if these textures were embedded in an fbx file this file would be more like uh you know like 15 megabytes or so it would definitely not be 917k so keep all that in mind uh, let's just go ahead and do import all right and this is what i'm uh, looking at this is how the character comes in so if you're doing this with me, you should see exactly uh, same thing. If I turn on the uh, textures uh, button right here, you can see what that looks like. Um, you can see there's some some uh, strangeness going on with the normal map. Let's go ahead and uh, right click and go to material attributes and let's take a look. So by default, it's assigning uh, a uh, foam material, right? And which is fine. Now, uh, what does that mean? Now, the foam material is interesting because you could export stuff out of uh, Maya into Unity or Unreal, and the texture should just 
um, come in automatically just working, right? But if you um, wanted to, for example, render this character in uh, Maya, maybe you're making like a cinematic, you know, short or, or a trailer or a movie, whatever uh, you're doing, you don't want to use foam, right? You definitely want to switch it to Arnold materials. So this is one of the things I wanted to kind of take you along the way and just kind of talk about different uh, things that you might run into, right? So to fix the normal uh, issue, uh, if you go to bump mapping and click on this little button, uh, in your color space, it's currently set to sRGB. If we go to utility and switch this to raw, uh, you can see that that is automatically uh, kind of fixes most of the issues and you can see that looking much better. If, for example, we didn't want this to be so uh, specular, right? We could go to specularity and we could just tone this down. So maybe we don't want it shiny or maybe we do. Maybe we want it super shiny, right? So this is uh, how you would control that. But uh, if you wanted to render this out again in Maya and you're not really uh, exporting this out straight to something like uh, Unity or Unreal, obviously you're going to have to uh, create Arnold materials. To do that, you know, you could, for example, select the whole thing, right click, do assign. We can do assign favorites or do assign new material. If I go to favorites, I have AI standard surface as one of my favorites. If you don't have that, you can go to uh, new, st new material, just select Arnold. And um, if you click on Arnold, you, sh you should see the AI standard surface material right there. So if I click on it, you can see uh, what that did, right? So it assigned the material to both the staff and the character. And, and we know that Jessica made the texture um, for this whole bundle as one texture. So the weapon is part of this texture, right? So we could apply material to the entire thing. And uh, that's pretty much it. Then you would just go and navigate to your files and uh, pick the color map and the normal map. And then you could set up uh, Arnold, uh, you know, render. Another way you could do it, obviously, is if you go into if you go into the Substance tab, um, we could automatically assign the, these, right? So we could say, uh, let's just select our maps, go to Texture, and I'm just going to select all of these and say Select, right? And then uh, if I say uh, Apply and select again the entire character, right click and do Existing, I know that the one that I just made is going to be AI Standard uh, 2, right? With, with the one that we just did with the substance uh, plugin so if I uh, assign it you can see that all of these maps are automatic automatically assigned now the cool thing about this is that now you can render them really beautifully uh, here in Maya right so for example let's grab a sky dome light and we can turn our lights on and uh, let's give it a uh, quick HDR doesn't really matter what it is, just uh, as a test. I'm just gonna grab one. All right, so here's one. Uh, and you can see automatically now, if I, if I would uh, render this, and maybe let's do something kind of low, like 1K, and I could bump these up a little bit if I, uh, if I wanted to. We can also change the uh, samples, right? So you, you don't wanna change the samples of your Sky Dome to make it a little uh, higher quality. So maybe I usually go to like four and you can see how beautiful that looks. And now if you just do a quick render, you can see how cool that's looking. And we could set up more lights. Obviously we can do, you know, if this is going to be an animation in Maya, you can set up your own uh, light rig with like a rim light and all of that. But just for the sake of demonstration, let's just pump up the uh, intensity so we can see the character a little better and maybe let's turn off the visibility for the camera so we can just focus on the character so this is pretty much how you would uh, you know set up a beautiful cinematic render of, or of your uh, animation so i wanted to show you uh both ways right so one again is for you know 
creating an animation uh, rendering in Maya and the other one if we didn't do, if we didn't do any of this uh, for the game engine uh, obviously you don't need to set up material and lights you would just bring this into your game engine and then set up materials there using the existing textures so I kind of wanted to kind of walk you through both right all right cool so uh, let's see let's go ahead and get this character ready for uh, rigging how do we do it well, one of the things I uh, would like to do is I'm going to turn off these lights. I don't want to look at them. And we can even turn this off so it's not uh, distracting. But um, one thing that you need to understand is when you are creating a game model, right? One of the things that you want to make sure is in addition to the fact that maybe the character is well optimized topology wise, you also want to avoid having too many pieces uh, being separate. And the reason for that is because when you bring these game characters into uh, any game engine, every single piece will have its own uh, draw call, which is going to add more, um, you know, it's gonna add more intensity for the game to uh, render out and play smoothly. So. The best thing uh, you can do to make your meshes super optimized and uh, playing well, right, um, in your game, is if you combine all the meshes and then control uh, any piece that you want with joints or uh, even blend shapes. For so for that reason, we don't really want all of these to be separate. You could see that if I look at Jessica's model, I can see that. Uh, she's called it the skirt, but the skirt is separate from the character. The teeth are separate. That are uh, looks like it's part of the belt decoration, and uh, you know you have the eyes, right? The eyes are separate. So how do we combine? We need to combine all of this into one uh, optimized mesh. We don't want all these pieces, and we also we also uh, don't want to have uh, all these different groups that are. Uh, holding these meshes. So what would be the best way to start uh, getting this ready for uh, rigging? So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to show, I'm going to go to viewport, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say none. So I'm going to click on this none, and that's going to hide everything, right? Now if I go back into show and go to viewport, I can just simply select uh, just the polygons, right? So so that's the checkbox up here. So if I select that, you can now see that everything is hidden except the polygons of the, or the mesh, right? Everything else is totally hidden. So that means if I select, for example, let's select the character, everything that has to do with the character, uh, which is the necklace, the eyes, the teeth, uh, and all the little props. All right, so now if I go to modeling, poly modeling tab and do a combine and clear my history, you can see that I'm left with just one mesh for my character. And the staff I think should be a separate mesh in case, you know, if you want to change the weapon or the uh, prop for the character, maybe he's going to be holding a sword in certain parts of the game when he's fighting. So maybe it's a good idea to keep the separate so you can all, always uh, hide it, right, or swap it or replace it in the game engine. So for that reason, I'm going to select all of these elements, right? right? We can do the same thing. We can combine it and clear the history. And now what we're left with it, uh, is the character and his staff, right? That means we don't really need anything else. And if you look in your outliner, you can see that the meshes have this very specific icon. And in my case, I actually missed one. So there's one that I missed if I select it and do isolate, I can see which one I missed. I'm not really sure, uh, honestly, what that is. Oh, that's the inside the necklace. Okay, cool. Um, so I think I'm, I want this to be part of the model as well. So um, I'm gonna select that piece and the character and do uh, combine one more time and clear my history. Because I do want the character to be by himself, right? So that includes uh, his necklace. All right, very cool. Now, uh, we don't need any of this anymore. So I'm gonna press delete. And now I'm left just again with the staff and the character. All right, nice. Now you can also see that the character is currently uh, not centered. 
I need him to be centered. So to do this, uh, if I go to my move to uh, my move uh, tool here, how do we how do we know for sure that this is uh, centered, right? So right now it looks like the pivot is located somewhere in this area here, but I'm not 100% sure if this is the center of the character. It might be, but um, I would like to snap it to something that I can see uh, a little bit better, maybe like the center line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press uh, D, hold down D, and then hold down the V key and just grab this and just snap it to the center of his belly. And this way I'm 100% certain that this is in the... All right, so now since I know this is uh, centered, right, I can uh, jump into maybe my side view and I can turn on my textures here in this view as well. Holding down the X key, I can center this uh, and maybe move him up, make sure that he is standing on the ground, right? Uh, let's look at uh, uh, let's look at our staff. So if I select the staff uh, and maybe I can switch to uh, you know I can attempt to center my pivot, but you can see that that's also not really doing a good job, right? So one of the things I could do is maybe again hold down the D key and just kind of position it more in the center. Okay, so that could be. Uh, useful, but we're not really too concerned about the pivot of the weapon because we're gonna uh, tie it to a joint, right? Uh, all we need to do is just simply move it up and maybe kind of out of the way. It doesn't really matter at this point where it's located. But uh, let's just uh, even hide it. So I'm gonna select this and press H on my keyboard and just simply hide it, right? And if we wanted to, we could even rename it. Uh, let's say this could be his um, staff maybe and then he could be uh, let's just call him alien or character right so um, all right so now we know he's centered and he's you know if you look at it he is looking like he is still off center and he's kind of standing back a little bit and for that maybe we need to adjust it let's just go ahead and center him and we can move him around once we bring in the joints as well right but um, I think he definitely needs to be centered uh, um, looking from this direction, right? All right, really cool. All right, so there's a couple more things I would like to do before uh, adding a uh, adding joints to this uh, character. So one of the other things you wanna make sure whenever you get a model that obviously you didn't build yourself is you wanna make sure that all the uh, points are welded together. And that's a good idea because during the animation or uh, deformation, uh, the skin um, you know, will be uh, better optimized for animation if it's welded together. So in this case, if I select this model, uh, right click and go to faces and just double click, uh, you can see that when I double click on his body, the entire body is not being selected, which means this is not, um, well, these points are not welded together, right? And if you wanted to double check that and just make sure that that's the case, if I select this uh, body, right, his skin, and go to sculpting and grab uh, something like, uh, let's grab the smooth brush and try to smooth underneath his armpit, so you can see that there's a huge gap that appears, right? And that just means that the points are not welded together. So let's fix this. Um, so to do this, I'm gonna select the body and I'm gonna double click on uh, holding on the shift key, I'm just gonna double click and select just the skin portion of this character, right? So uh, let's go ahead and go grab his uh, hands and I'm gonna grab his feet as well. So you can see all of these are kind of sliced together or I mean sliced apart. So uh, let's grab this piece as well. So very quickly, just by, by double clicking, I'm only selecting this skin only, right? I'm gonna leave the, uh, you know, his hanging uh, front and all these uh, uh, other elements to be separate. That's totally fine. But I do want the skin to be as one piece. All right, so once everything is selected, uh, let's go ahead and go to, uh, let's say I'm gonna go to select and I'm gonna do convert selection to verts. Right, um, I'm gonna press B on my keyboard because I don't want to have the uh, soft select on. Make sure 
uh, under self select you don't have the self selection uh, turned on but now you can see that there's a total of 6,055 uh, 6, points and you can see that in your heads up display if you don't see that that's under display heads up display and just turn on your poly count and you will see this number here okay so there's 6,000 points and what I want to do is I want to weld them together so to do this I'm gonna go to edit mesh merge I'm gonna click on options and I'm gonna reset my settings and when I press apply uh, keep an eye on your number of verts if I say apply you can see it just went from 6,000 to 5,000 right which means now all of these should be uh, welded together if I go to object mode select my mesh go to sculpting grab my smooth brush and try to smooth this out you can see that now it's not separating which means it's um, you know one piece right and this is much much better for us for uh, rigging to move forward all right so that's done uh, the other thing uh, I would like to do is in order to set up the joints and not have a terrible time aligning the joints with the arms and the finger and then worry about you know joint orientation and all of that stuff it would be a lot easier if this character was more in a T pose instead of this kind of a A pose. And that's just a technical uh, thing that most uh, riggers would, uh, you know, prefer um, is if your character's in the T pose. I know a lot of times it's not as exciting or appealing to see a character in the T pose because it's, you know, it's kind of ugly, but it's a lot easier to rig the character uh, that way. So to do this, let's do this. Let's jump into the front view and uh, let's go into uh, verts, right? And let's grab something like the lasso tool. And let me just uh, make a selection of the verts, right? Now I want to, if I raise this arm up, obviously I want this to be symmetrical. Um, but if you look really close, you can see that the topology on this character does not look symmetrical, which means if I go to symmetry and turn on object X, it's not going to uh, select things on both sides because this is not symmetrical. So what can we do? We could try topology. Let's go to topology and let's click on the center and tell Maya that this is the center and let's attempt to do it that way. And uh, I do want to be in verts. So that doesn't work either. All right, so let's try world X. Uh, that does work. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be our option for this because this is not the topology is not symmetrical. So world X is just going to simply kind of estimate where the points are on the other side. So that's great. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a selection and do something like this where we just grab the entire arm up up to the shoulder and i'm gonna press press b on my keyboard to turn on soft select and my soft select is currently turned on to i'm gonna set it to two that's fine uh i'm not liking that it's grabbing those points on the bottom let me try one uh let's see how about 1.4 I think that's a little bit better. I don't want these points to be too low. So I'm going to press E, hold down the D key, and I'm going to put this uh, pivot right where the shoulder is, right about uh, here. And let's just go ahead and move this up. So something like this. And as we're moving this up or rotating it, you can see it's distorting the top of the shoulder right here. So I'm going to press W and also move this up and kind of away a little bit to make sure that it's not distorted too much something like this should work and we can smooth out the uh, bottoms of the um, armpit in a second as well let's also do the same thing to the wrist I'm gonna go to verts uh, let's just grab my lasso again I'm gonna click here to deselect everything and then I'm gonna select just the wrist part hold down uh, E to rotate and do the same thing. I'm gonna hold down D, change the pivot of my uh, wrist and just simply kind of move this up. Press W if you wanna maybe position it a little better. And now uh, if you look at your character, now this is more of a T pose, which is gonna be a little bit easier for us to uh, rig. I'm gonna right click and go to object mode 
and let's go ahead and jump into perspective view and take a look so one of the things we can do is let's fix this uh, issue on the bottom here right so I'm gonna go to sculpting grab my smooth brush holding down the B key you can adjust the size and let's just smooth this out a little bit so it's not so stretchy and uh, that should that should work all right I think that's uh, I think that's good okay um, I think he's ready so the next thing is going to be uh, let's jump into the human IK tab if you don't see this tab you can just uh, press on this button here okay and make sure you do control s to save your work and um, in if you look in the outliner currently you have your alien and we have our lights and the staff but the alien is the only one that is being visible right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to um, let's say none and make sure that this is says character none and what, what we want to do is we want to create a new skeleton so I'm gonna say create skeleton okay when I press on it you can see this ginormous skeleton that's being created and it's much larger than my character so there's two things I can either make my character much larger or I can downsize the skeleton so to do that um, what I could do is I'm gonna go to character scale here and switch this to 0.5 and press enter and the skeleton is scaled down right and we can even do it a little more or um, you know because he's kind of thick I, I actually don't mind the joints being this size I kind of like that so uh, let's just go with this so I'm gonna select this and to start aligning it I'm gonna start aligning it in the front view and you can turn on this button right here if that's not uh, yet turned on the x-ray joints uh, press W and let's just position the skeleton to where the pelvis is right about here all right now I'm gonna grab uh, this hip here and move it into position grab this knee and move it up and then this is the ankle I'm gonna move it up and one of the things that I need to make sure is that I need to make sure that the uh, knee is right over this knee but I do see that in order for this to work um, I have to hold down the D key and I'm just gonna move this in just slightly so it's right on the edge of the hip and I'm going to do I'm gonna leave this alone and I'm okay with this being a little closer to the end we, we could take the mesh and also pull in the feet in um, but I think this will work I think this is this is fine all right so uh, next I'm gonna select this uh, hip bone go to my human IK and right there that you see there's a button that says uh, right to left I'm gonna click on it and that's gonna also align the same thing with the other side of the leg right very nice um, before we do this we're also gonna have to do this in the side view but let's just keep going in the front and uh, one of the things that I'm seeing is that there are three links for the spine uh, maybe that's a little bit of overkill. Let's go to spine uh, here and switch this to uh, two. Press enter, and you can see one of the links is being uh, was deleted. So this is kind of where the stomach is. I'm gonna grab this chest and move it into position. These are kind of the uh, clavicles, so I'm gonna leave them uh, about here. This is the shoulder, and you can see how I'm not rotating anything. I'm just moving it. Um, you know sideways right but I'm not rotating anything and I'm gonna grab this guy and move it into the elbow this is gonna be the uh, wrist so the wrist is right there and uh, let's see so let's go ahead and click on this and let's flip it over to the other side all right and this is what it's looking like from the front I think I'm ready to do it from the side I'm gonna press spacebar jump into the side view and let's take a look and see what's going on here um, maybe we can actually watch both of these so I'm gonna click on the knee and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the D key and just simply move this uh, towards the back of the knee okay you can uh, also turn off your soft select if you have any 
kind of a weird selections make sure that soft select is off but i'm gonna press uh, place my knee right behind uh closer to the kind of the back of it right and um i'm fine with the ankle being here i think that's okay and let's see what else we got this is the belly right if we wanted to move the belly into maybe a different position we can hold down d and just kind of move this back a little bit let's um grab the chest and do the same holding down the d i'm just going to move it over a little all right let's talk about the neck so the neck uh is kind of interesting his neck is all the way forward right and it starts kind of all the way back here. So I'm gonna move this to the bottom of where I think his neck is, probably around here. Grab this one and move it, move it right in the middle. So something like that, I think is good. And uh, finally, the last step is going to be uh, making sure that it look, makes sense from the top and also aligning all the fingers, right? So let's go ahead and jump into the top view. And let's think about this. So these are the shoulders. And let me see where the clavicle is, it's right there. I'm gonna uh, move it back a little bit. And I'm gonna select the shoulder and move it just a little bit back. I'm making sure that the uh, elbow is perfectly aligned. I'm gonna grab this uh, wrist. And let's go ahead and put it into position press E and just kind of rotate it a little bit. All right, and let's go ahead and talk about the finger. So there's the, our skeleton currently has five fingers, but the creature has four, which means if we go to our finger bones here, let's turn off one of these and we can decide which one. Um, I think we should just turn off the, uh, probably just the middle finger. Let's turn that off. So now we have this uh, pinky, I'm gonna press W, just kind of put it in position. And let's figure out where the, and then we can also uh, actually make sure we're on object mode, but let's just go ahead and find the, where the fingers bend, right? So somewhere here, here, and this is gonna be kind of the end. So let's very quickly kind of position these as well. So this is the end here. Um, we're gonna have to do a better job with the thumb because it's kind of hard to see but just from the top view I'm just doing the best that I can so let's just find I think something like that should work um, let's go into our um, perspective view and let's see if we can align these a little bit better right so I'm gonna grab this joint here I'm going to move it down and maybe rotate it to match um, kind of match the thumb a little bit better uh, let's talk about if you select uh, something you can, can uh, press F and maybe let's move this up I can go to the bottom of the finger and kind of rotate this to match the angle just a little bit better and let's do the same thing with this one I'm gonna select it move it up to kind of the knuckle and then go to the bottom of the finger and grab my rotation tool and just kind of move it down uh, I think that's fine let's go ahead and grab the pinky and do the same thing kind of find the uh, knuckle which is I think somewhere around here go to the bottom of the finger Grab the rotation tool and just move it into position. And they don't need to be exactly uh, perfect, but close enough, right? So I think that's pretty good. All right, very nice. So uh, let's see. So the next thing we want to do is I'm going to click on this clavicle and I'm going to flip it over to the other side. All right. And now if I select the center of the rig and press F, um, I can spin it around and make sure that it looks like most of these joints uh, make sense and they're, you know, they're properly positioned inside the mesh, right? All right, very nice. Uh, if you're happy and everything looks good, uh, you can go ahead and lock your skeleton definition. 
So I'm gonna lock that up. That means I'm kind of committing to this. And the next thing I would like to do is let's go ahead and bind it. So to bind it, I'm gonna select the uh, skeleton, hold down shift and select the mesh, go to uh, rigging, go to skin, bind skin. Let's click on options and let's reset these. And uh, for the skinning met method, let's go ahead and uh, for bind method, let's go ahead and switch it to geodesic uh, voxel. And the only other thing that we should do is uh, let's pump up the uh, resolution from 256 to uh, let's do something more precise. So maybe you could try 512 or 1024. I'm going to do 1024. Make sure it's, um, you know, it's a little bit um, higher, um, a little bit better results. And I'm going to go ahead and do apply. All right, very nice. So once that's done, uh, let's go ahead and close our window. And I'm gonna select this arm here, grab the rotation tool, and just make sure that uh, it makes sense. And you can see there are some gonna be some adjustments. So as I'm rotating the shoulder, the back uh, is kind of weird. And if I grab the uh, head and try to move it up and down, uh, Maybe this makes sense, but I think right here it needs to be a little, uh, a little adjustment. Let's grab the leg and try to bend that. The leg actually seems to be pretty good. Uh, I think all of that is good. Let's try maybe uh, the chest. And we can see which parts of the model need to be adjusted and which ones are okay, right? So I think, uh, I think that's pretty good. So now uh, let's talk about maybe we can rotate it, uh, we can bend it down. Let's maybe do a little bit of an adjustment. So if I wanted to, for example, adjust the head, right? I'm gonna grab the head and move it up and down. And let's see if I can maybe, let's go ahead and move, let's leave this up just like this. And I'm gonna select this mesh, right? I'm gonna go to skin, paint skin weights, and I'm gonna click on my options. And now what I can do is I can right click on this neck uh, and I have to find uh, select influence. If I select the influence, you can see that the neck uh, joint is being selected. So you can even select it uh, manually, just find the neck. And what I would like to do is I would like to smooth out this portion of the mesh. So holding down the B, I can change the size of my brush. And um, another thing I can do is I can go to my uh, smooth setting here under select geometry. And I'm gonna switch my profile brush to soft brush. I'm gonna leave opacity at one. And what I could do, I could just smooth this out a little bit. And you can see that that looks uh, much, much better. All right, so now if we go back and grab this joint again and try to uh, rotate it, you can see that now it seems to be uh, a little more natural right so that that totally works uh, i'm gonna set my rotation back to uh, zero and let's see what else can we adjust let's uh, grab this shoulder here and move it down you can see that i don't really want as the as the arm comes down i don't want the arm to be affecting the very top of this uh character's uh back and also uh you know, I'm not sure what happened on your end, but on my end, it's also affecting this uh, necklace part or this hanging thing on his neck. So to fix the same thing, I'm going to select the mesh um, and click. Uh, let's go ahead and click on our uh, paint skin weights. Right click and go to select influence and I'm going to select uh, the shoulder. And what I'd like to do is I would like to remove all this influence. I don't want all of this to be influenced. So I'm gonna say uh, replace and I can even do scale actually or replace. Let's go to replace and let's just do uh, value. So I'm gonna leave opacity at 100% and value at zero. And I'm just gonna paint in or paint out uh, all this influence that is being affected by the, the top. I'm gonna right click on here, select select influence and do the same thing. Just kind of paint out um, all of this influence here. Very nice. And now if I try this one more time, if I bring the arm down, you can see that it's not, it's no longer affecting the top of the character. And same thing here, if I move this down, uh, that's much better. 
Now we do still have a problem with this. So to fix this, what I can do is I can select um, all of these faces here, just like that. And then go back uh, to this. And while this is being selected, I can say, um, I can flood this and because I have these uh, uh, verts selected, Maya will know that all the any influence that is linked to the shoulder is going to be removed, right? So I'm going to say flooded, and that will take care of this. I'm going to come on this side, right click, do the select influence, and flood it on this side as well. And now, if we go to object mode and grab our shoulder, uh, you can see that this is. Uh, no longer affecting our necklace, right? Because we kind of unlinked that part of the mesh. All right, very cool. So that uh, is how you quickly can fix and adjust your skin weights um, and make sure that everything uh, makes sense. Another thing we can do is we can select our skeleton here, go to source, and let's activate uh, a control rig. Right, a control rig is going to give us uh, all of these controllers that will allow us to animate our character using F, K, and I, K. So if I select, for example, the pelvis here, press W, you can see that now my character is ready to be uh, fully animated, right? And uh, same thing here, I can select these joints individually and then press E and I can animate them uh, like that. So one of the things we could do just for fun, maybe let's go ahead and bring his arms down. So he looks a little more uh, natural. All right. And we can maybe move this arm or maybe let's go ahead and move this uh, down as well and kind of get him in a more interesting pose. And if you wanted to create an animation, there's a couple things you can do. You can bring in a, a motion capture file and I show on my channel how to do that as well um, and if you want to custom animate it using uh, keyframes um, let's select all of these and let's do something really simple I'm gonna go to I'm gonna set my timeline to 10 uh, keyframes and on keyframe 1 I'm gonna select my controllers and press S as soon as I press S you can see that that's been keyed right so now I can go to maybe frame 10 and press S and let's go to frame uh, five and let's make a change just so we can see how the animation would work, right? So I'm gonna, maybe I can bring him down and maybe, I'm just trying to do something really simple. I, I honestly, I don't wanna spend time uh, animating this, but I just wanna show you guys. So I'm gonna move this up. And now if I press play, you can see that he's kind of starting to dance a little bit, right? And of course, if you want to make this longer, for example, maybe you feel like it's doing it too fast, I can go to frame 20, I can expand my timeline, and if I select my uh, controllers, I can hold on, press shift, and I can just move this over. And let's go ahead and move this to 10, and just kind of press play and slow him down a little bit. And the animation is a lot of fun. So I uh, obviously this is not an animation tutorial, but let's go just go ahead and maybe do like a little dance move. Maybe he can do uh, his arms out a little bit and he's having fun, right? Now, another thing that uh, you could do uh, is to make it even more interesting and sophisticated is you could add a joint that controls um, the necklace by itself or even the uh, you know this part here you can add a joint here and here and I can show you how to do that just for the necklace for example um, to do that what you want to do is let's go ahead and back let's go back to stand right and once I go to stand he kind of resets his um, uh, pose and now I can go back to none and that kind of jumps out of the controller uh, mode and now if I wanted to let's create a join that controls just this portion here so to do this I'm gonna go uh, to rigging I'm gonna go into let's go into a side view right here 
and let's just do a let's create a, another joint and just plop one right here right I'm gonna grab my move and just maybe put it right in the center just like that okay and uh, now what I can do is I can select the and we can also name this if we want so maybe let's name this uh, necklace All right now one thing that I need to do is I need to link this to uh, to the neck right so I'm gonna select um, I'm gonna select this first then shift and select the neck and press P and you can see what that did that created a connection right and you can see it's coming from the bottom of the neck to the necklace so now how do we um, add the um, how do we add influence to this joint right so to do this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select uh, this uh, joint uh, hold on shift and click on the mesh and then if I go to uh, skin I can go to edit influences and I can say add influence and let's go to options and take a look and in here um, let's go ahead and reset this so one of the things you want to do you don't want to mess with all the other work that we did with the skeleton so I'm gonna say lock weights that's gonna make sure that it's not gonna touch anything that is created that's uh, linked to the body right I only want to um, add more influence to the necklace only so uh, I'm gonna lock this I'm, I'm gonna say default to zero that's fine I'm just gonna say add as soon as you press add it looks like nothing happened and if you select this and press uh, W you can see that it's not affecting anything um, but if you go back into your skin pain skin weights and click on options right let's go ahead and right click and say select influence and you can see that when i uh, select the necklace um, in the tool settings it's totally it's uh, it's currently locked if i unlock this right that's going to allow me to assign verts um, or custom weights to this necklace piece which means if I go to verts and let's just select maybe the parts of the necklace that we want to control. So, so I'm, gonna I'm gonna select it maybe uh, all the way up to uh, here, something like that. I'm gonna go to my skin weights. Let's make sure it's a uh, replace and I'm gonna do opacity 100% and the value of 100% and let's just do a flood, right? And what that's gonna allow us to do is now if we go into object mode and select this um, let's go ahead and activate our joint all right so that's going to allow us to control the uh the necklace a little bit and we can do a better job painting the weights but i'm just kind of uh quickly showing you um, how that's done and how you can link additional joints to the skeleton so now if i go back into the control rig right and play my animation once again uh, the cool thing about this is that now I have this extra joint that I can animate. So I can select it, go to frame uh, 0, press S to set a key on it. Let's go to frame 20 and press S. And now if I go to frame 10, right, I can grab this guy and maybe, um, you know, let's go ahead and move it down and rotate it. But as you can see, I, I can animate it so I have full control over that. So I'm going to maybe move it into a different position. And now if I press play, you can see that the uh, necklace is also being animated. So that's how you can uh, add more complexity and control to, um, to your character. And in this case, obviously, this is a little bit too much. So that's a little too crazy. But you can see that it's, it's independent, right, from the rest of the uh, rig. And let's just do maybe a little bit better job. Very cool. So that's pretty much it. Um, and uh, now if you also uh, render this out, obviously, right, you're going to have, let's go ahead and turn our lights back on. And I need to make sure my dome light is not hidden, right? But now if I render this out, I can render this out as a, uh, as a sequence. So, uh, and then bring it into something like Adobe Premiere and render out, you know, a short film uh, from my keyframe animations if I choose, choose to do so. 
I guess one thing we forgot is to do the staff. I just realized that. So to do the staff, let me uh, just turn that back on. And all right, finally, let's go ahead and activate our uh, staff so we can maybe include it uh, as part of our animation. So uh, to do this, I'm gonna go back into the front view. Uh, just like before, I'm gonna go to skeleton and create a joint. Now let's just drop a joint uh, right there in the middle, right? And this is gonna be our controller uh, for the staff, that's fine. And we just need to make sure that it's um, centered from every direction. So, Go ahead and press F and just make sure that it's, and then press W and just make sure that it's kind of inside the uh, the staff, right? Okay, very cool. Uh, next, I need to let's go ahead and name this joint staff. That's fine. And uh, I'm going to select the joint, hold on the Shift key, and click on the mesh. Go to let's go go to skin, bind skin, and let's go ahead and reset this one more time. And I'm just going to leave this as is and just do apply and close, right? All right, so that means now if we select this uh, joint and try to move it, you can see that it's also moving the staff, right? Which is exactly uh, what we want. All right, next, let's go ahead and jump into the perspective view and let's get him out of this uh, control uh, rig mo uh, view. So again, I'm gonna uh, go to stance, go to stance to reset his uh, Pose and then say none to jump out of the uh, controller rig. And what I would like to do is I want to take this joint and just like we did with the um, the necklace, let's just kind of link it to his hand. So I'm going to rotate this into position and let's go ahead and move it maybe somewhere uh, over here so it makes kind of sense. I'm kind of doing it fast, but I'm just want to show you the process, right? So you're gonna put it into position, we can rotate it. And this is the same thing that we do with like a weapon, uh, you know, a sword or something like that. And once uh, you are happy with the position, I just wanna make sure it's right about where his uh, wrist is, right? So I'm gonna select the staff and then hold on the shift key and click on the wrist and press uh, P. And now you can see that when you move the uh, character's wrist, the staff will uh, follow, right? Which also means if we go back into the controller rig animation, the staff will now be uh, part of it, right? So if I press play, because the uh, joint is linked uh, to the rest of the skeleton, it's, it becomes sort of a part of it, right? So one of the things obviously I would have to do is um, maybe rotate the fingers a little bit better and let's go ahead and grab uh, all of these controllers and maybe just kind of close his um, wrist a little bit right and now um, I can of course copy them to the last frame as well and Maybe, um, you know, on this one, he can have it closed or maybe he can open it up a little bit. So now if I, if I press play, you can see that he's kind of closing his fingers and full on dancing, right? We can also uncheck this if we want to see what that looks like. So a lot of fun and pretty easy, pretty simple stuff. So I, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed this sort of a, almost an experiment, right? And um, got it. Oh, we forgot to um, link this tooth there. It's kind of not moving around, but that's fine. But um, I just want to show you um, the process. All right. So thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you in the next video.